What's up, everybody? This is the King's Speech Podcast Sports Special. Sports, sports, sports. <laughs> Anybody who's listening purely loves sports, um, which means we probably lost our entire female audience. Be gone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ooh, that was some spicy energy. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. All right, so we're uh, so our our. Our episode, of course, like had a lot of great content, but we didn't want to run it too long. So everything that we're going to talk about sports wise, this is, is only be for right the YouTube. Uh, no, I'm going to put this on, on audio form also. So like a extendo, extendo. Pulse. Oh, that's a blessing. Extendos are a blessing. That's a blessing. So is that going to be new? Up? Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Indeed. Part two. Um, part two. Part two. Part two. Part two. Um, so the first story I wanted to get to, I read a story on Yahoo Sports about Rob Palenka, right? He is the GM, president of basketball operations for the Los Angeles Lakers, doing an amazing job, bang-up job, uh, defending champions, and just getting better every single day that free agency passes. Um, It was a story about him basically putting his ego to the side, unlike a lot of other people who have worked with LeBron James, and understanding, yo, LeBron James knows a lot of great basketball players, Maybe I should <laughs> let him have like a little. <laughs> maybe I should let him have just like a little bit of influence on who's on this team. When a lot are of you, GMs, are you coming here to tell me that LeBron was behind every single Laker s- trading and dropping? I don't think every single one, but I do think he had a lot of input. Which one? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me some Bron takes right now. I think the biggest one probably the Dennis Schroeder trade. Okay, That's I think a that one also. Fucking steal! It is. That's a huge steal. We're here to talk sports. It's a steal. That's a steal. It's a steal. But, I mean, it's a steal in a fire sale. It's like stealing something from a clearance store. Because, like, the Thunder are just giving away everybody. They they sent Steven Adams to the Pelicans. The Thunder went on clearance. Yeah. The Thunder went on clearance. Because, and here's why, um, to your point, and to this Rob thing, because Montrez Harrell is represented by who? Rich Paul. Yeah. Rich motherfucker. Yo, I woke up that morning and I looked at Kim and I said, yo, babe, what LeBron James did for his dogs, Rich Paul, um, Maverick, Mav Carter, yeah. like, is only something that I could dream of. Like, that is literally what I would want to do. Like, that is what you want to do for your niggas. Because ideally, now, yes, absolutely. Ideally, because now it's like they each feed each other, bro. Montrez Harrell, sixth man of the year, runner up was who? Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder. Yep. Stop playing with me, bro. Stop and playing. And they're both and they're both Los Angeles Lakers right now. And crazy to to speak to Rob's ego. There are so many people in the league that don't like that shit. So many old white crusty niggas that don't like that shit Is that at a all. Fact? They don't like that influence. In That's, our league right now. In our league, I, I, listen, like let's let's not in the NFL. Let's let's, let's not forget who are the majority of the owners in this league. Like, one of the reasons that's rumored that James Harden wants out of Houston is because his owner is a Trump donator and supporter. Oh, that's the type of time we on. And that's the type of time most very wealthy billionaires are on who own sports franchises. That's NBA big. is not, NBA is not um, I guess, like, excluded from that. Yeah. So, that, so those big. are, those, big. Those are huge, big. and those people are seeing... Yeah, you got um, some good tea. Who is your source, my These name? young... Oh, I can't, I can't release that. What? Who release the? That. I can't James release that. Harden, yo, once that was that was in the news Houston. though. That was in the not, news. Not in I the heard Florida about it. news. I heard about it sooner, but that was in the news. Um, <laughs> oh, I heard about it sooner. Quick flex, but okay. Indeed. Um, this is good. This is good. So uh, that's that's what I feel like is as, as far as like Rob in this article, like really not really giving in, but understanding that like we can work together better than me having an ego and being standoffish about ideas that are coming from this player who are, and they're great ideas, but I'm just too self-conscious and too insecure to actually like take these ideas and do something with them, even though they're great ideas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that is extremely, extremely, extremely important on Rob's part. I will just say this right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, very sad that white people were conditioned to think that if a black person was to give them an idea and they like it, that they would be less than for agreeing with that idea. It's a very sad notion. 
And we've seen that displayed in just about every premise of life, right? Like, so it's good to have the self-awareness. Like, I respect Rob's self-awareness to be like, honestly, LeBron's just an intelligent person. And maybe I value his opinion. And um, because I do doesn't make me less of a person. No, it doesn't. But letting people have other ideas kind of fucks with the power structure, though. Letting these young black kids, letting LeBron and Mav and um, uh, who else and Rich Paul have these ideas and basically like run the league and represent all the best players in the league kind of bristles the fact that like most of the people that used to represent those players were older, older white guys. Guess like, what, buddy? felt like they didn't have to. And like, like imagine, imagine you're an NBA owner for 30, 40 years and you got to have a, and you're used to having conversations with people that you felt like were on your level where your peers look just like you. And now you got niggas coming into your office and talking to you about representation. Hey buddy. It's a hard it's pill to too swallow. Fucking late. The train's moving. Get on. I don't care. It's over. It's, it's happening, yo. It's the yeah. dopest thing to sit here. I texted my man the other day, and I said, yo, bro. Actually, Trav. Shout out to Trav, because Trav is going to listen to this, and I know he's going to appreciate this. Um, we were talking about it, and I was like, yo, we are living through the dopest time in history. The documentaries that we will watch five years from now. Yeah. Fire. Because we were watching the changing of the guard. You know what's the, crazy? LeBron's going to own a team, bro. Pick one. I don't know if it's going to be an NBA team. LeBron is going to own a team. I don't know if it's going to be an NBA team. I don't know if it's stop, going to be an NFL stop, team, but he is going to stop, own a team. Stop. You, Yo, how about both? You guys got to realize, like, the guard has to change. And it's, 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 it's changing NBA team. kind of right now. Not all the time. Changing kind of right now. But I feel like he will own a team. I feel like in the NBA, maybe. I think it's likely. 60 40 maybe um one of the quotes that i like from the article he says um if at, mike can at, own a team prawn can own a team if magic can be a part owner of a team if usher if usher raymond can have stakes in the cleveland if justin timberlake can be owner if jay-z can be owner and he owned 0.2 percent of the nets lebron many, can own a team how many of them have been as socially active or as vocal as LeBron James? LeBron James is actively, and I had this conversation last night with uh, with my, with uh, Kashima. Okay. LeBron James is actively in Akron, trying to educate and raise kids the right way, a different way than we're used to, a way that kind of values kids that are devalued, values kids that are written off. The power structure doesn't like that. And here's they don't like saying. they don't like you being outspoken and and being so outspoken that you say things about the president and don't go to the White House when you win championships. You can't stop him. You can slow him down. We have to understand what we're up against. And you I think LeBron try. and I think not, LeBron does. Not in our league because our commission we have a, we have the people's commissioner right now. Come on, he's, bro. He's he's still he still has to bend to the will of every single owner. Nothing moves without the owner's approval. But that's okay. how that that's how that's but set look up. Look at this. But look at the sway of the owners, bro. The league has changed in our very owners eyes. are the own, owners are doing the what's owners profitable. are changing. Owners are doing the what's owners profitable. Are, owners are changing. Nah, nah, nah. You ain't gonna this sell This is me on not that. the. This is not the NFL. This is not the NFL. The NFL is just more bla is just more blatant and more vocal and more popular. Nah, so that's why we give a fuck about what they think more. I don't even look at the NBA and the NFL in the same in the same social structure. At you all. have to because I NFL owners I and NBA not. owners golf together. They belong to the same country clubs. They share some of the same ideologies, and they it's operate that, their businesses in two different ways. But it doesn't two matter how you operate ways. your. But it doesn't matter how you operate your business if your if your baseline ideology is the same as another person who could be considered a racist or a Trump supporter or a white supremacist. Those I things, I, I think those type too, of feelings... I think that's too layered. That's too those, layered. those type of feelings cannot be suppressed for too long. And eventually they do rear their heads in business practices or things you say or things you do. I do think LeBron and his team are on the right way, but I do think they're going to come up against a lot of opposition. And most of that opposition is going to come when he's retired and he's not beloved the way he is now because he's not on TV every day. 
because he's not dunking on seven footers every day. Trev. I'm just saying, most people love LeBron because he it's dunks crazy. on seven footers. You know what's so crazy? I am more of a believer in LeBron James's ability for change in this the structure of the business of basketball after he's done with this than I am in him being a, 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 an all-time great. I think he's going to be an all-time great, but I think like the way he operates as a great athlete, he operates that shit as a social person. Like, And I'm not even a Bron fan. The streets know how I feel. I'm very indifferent. But like, I do believe in what he's doing. I do believe in the culture he's creating. And I do believe there's a change in our league. I, I don't even believe that. I see that. I know that. I, I think it's... I think it's evident to see that the league allows its players to have a voice because they know that's the most, that's the smoothest thing to do. And they know that if so players... So you think they're patronizing, you think they're patronizing no, the No, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're patronizing. I think they understand the NBA audience and the NFL audience are two very different audiences. The NFL sure. audience is a lot older, more traditional, more conservative. NBA audience is always going to be younger and and NBA players have just like a better connection to their fans. And fans listen more to NBA players because we actually see their face every day. There are so many famous football players. You can think about their names, how good they are. You can't picture their face in your head for shit right now because they have helmets on every weekend. But with NBA players, it's, it's a more personal connection. So owners are going to allow you to have that personal connection with that NBA player because guess what that personal connection leads to? Merch buys. Ticket sales. People don't go to football games for players. They go for quarterbacks, and they go because it's football. Nah, I disagree. We go, to, we go to NFL. We go to basketball. We go to basketball games for players. These how many people, times have you gone? Still, how many on, times Trev. have you gone to? How many times have you gone to a game because Kobe's in town or T Max in town? I've done it plenty people of times. Do this. Yo, yo, here's the thing. There's never, you there's never a like, time. There's never. Let me finish real quick. There's never a time where there's a football team coming to town, and it's like, oh, man, I can't wait to watch that left tackle get busy. Nobody does that. Here's the thing, right? This is the honest truth. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. You and I come from a culture where football is when football starts and when football ends, right? Outside of New York City, football is life. We've heard that before. What that means is from January to December, it's all about football. People follow these kids from fucking Pop Warner all the way up. They might not know their faces, but football fans are real fans. They of have football. more fans of there's a football of individual players of no. players that you, yes. Not more not not more than football. There's no individual there's no individual there's no individual non-quarterback to football fans that's bigger than football. We've made Michael Jordan bigger than basketball. We've made LeBron James bigger than basketball. In that in that sense, yes. But like in terms of like you're saying like people don't go to games to see players. People go to football games to see players because they've been Not following most people. players. Quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. Nobody goes to see a running receivers. back. Receivers. You go to see a receiver. You go to see, bro. Are you kidding me? They don't have enough influence on the game. Basketball players are on defense and offense, have more, have more time agree. on the court, I can touch I the just, ball more. I think it's two different arguments. I do think if, you really think, if you really think about wide receivers, what's the most times they're active in a game? Seven. Seven times. That's it. In a 60-minute game, the most times they're active two are seven sports. times. Right. Let's talk that's what, no, that, it is two different sports. Two that's, different that's, different no, that's why I'm saying like the NBA player has the, has the better ability to have a better relationship with fans to the point where, like, as a fan, if I feel like my league isn't doing right by my player, I'm not fucking with the league. It's different in the NFL. They screwed over Colin Kaepernick, and the ratings were higher than ever. It's too Just different. saying. I think, I think the NBA is doing a better job than the NFL. That's one. Better messaging. Yes. I, I, you clearly believe that the white man still has a lot of power. The white man is not redeemable. In the NBA. Just in general, the white man is not redeemable. Let's go, to, let's go with the free agent stuff. <laughs> Yo, why did you start sports attacking the white man? <laughs> I'm not attacking the white man. The white man is not redeemable. That's it. That's not an attack. It's a fact. The white man is not redeemable. Um, what is right. your favorite? Okay, 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 okay. Real quick, before we even start this off, 
what has been your what was your favorite draft moment? Did you see the draft? I didn't see the draft. Um, I was working. Um, that's fine. Uh, did you see any of the pickups? Did any of the pickups stand out to you? As a Nick fan, speak to me about OB topping. I'm not even. I'm more excited about the Miles Powell pickup. Okay, I'm more upset at the way the the league did Miles Powell. What do you mean? Miles, real quick, Miles Powell, young kid from Jersey, played Seton at Seton Hall. Hall, right? Gets buckets. Tatted. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna get to that. Tatted, uh -huh. real hood nigga. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Also, a real bucket getter. Absolutely. Okay. Real proven bucket getter, clutch, One star player. He's literally nice. Okay. The league drafted some kid from California named Nico, a white kid named Nico. Okay. Nico had a good season. That's cool. Miles Powell was also the Big East Player of the Year, along with other accolades, proven and didn't even get drafted. Mm -hmm. But shout out to the Knicks for getting him as a steal. As an oh, yeah, pick. that is a that is a steal. That's a steal. steal, but I am pissed at the way they did it because Miles deserved a draft night experience like everybody else who had one because he played his fucking ass off, and he deserved that. Yes, he did. Absolutely. Um, but I'm glad the Knicks got him. Uh, absolutely. Um, I feel like that was the biggest moment of the draft for me. Uh, what about you? Um, I thought the funniest moment was um, <laughs> LaMelo going to the Hornets. <laughs> um, I thought that was pretty funny. Terry Rozier who? Uh, <laughs> what is going on over there? Um, I liked... I mean, I didn't see Anthony Edwards. I don't know what he's about. Sorry. Um, the other kids I didn't see. Shout out to Precious. Um, his brother went to St. John's, played at St. John's. I like that. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see family get drafted. But other than that, mm -hmm. oh, a couple of the young kids, Cassius Stanley. But, like, I'm really I'm, – I'm scorned that Miles did not get drafted. I feel like I didn't get drafted on that because Cassius Stanley got drafted. We don't even know if that. he's good. We don't even know. I do like the Knicks picks, um, and then after that, they cut the entire fucking team, <laughs> and then they're signing like a bunch of like one uh, one year uh, contracts. And they have a bunch of cap room. I like the moves they're making. Still not a fan, but always aware because I'm a New Yorker and I'm going to be aware of New York shit. Um, but I like the moves that they're making, and I think it's going to be good for their future. That's yeah, it. Knicks, Knicks did some things. Um, free agency has been a zoo. Let's get into free agency. Oh, it's been nuts. Um, I woke up. What, two, three days ago, and I had like eight alerts on my phone. And that was a surprise because my phone don't go off, right? So I'm like, what the fuck was going on last night? Tap, it's ESPN. Mm -hmm. Mad alerts, mad alerts. And I'm just ecstatic. Some good shit. Uh, what has been your favorite free agency move? I think the funniest to me, um, Bogdan Bogdanovich. So... Bucket getter, averaged 15 points a game last year in Sacramento, coming off the bench, started a few games also. Bucket getter. Uh, there was a trade that was, um, I guess, like on the books for him to go to Milwaukee. And everything Milwaukee is doing right now is to keep Giannis, right? Get good players around him, try to get to the finals, and then lose to the Lakers eventually, apparently. I don't know. That's, that's, I guess that's the plan. <laughs> the Lakers are a brick <laughs> wall. Absolutely. Oh, I'm here to talk my shit today. Yeah, oh, we'll get to them a little bit later. Um and then the trade falls through, something, you know, like something goes bad on the Bucks end, and he ends up signing an offer sheet, a $72 million offer sheet with the Hawks, who have picked up some pretty good players with this, like this, uh, this offseason, Rajon Rondo, Gallinari, uh, and now cool. uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich to That's go along cool. with um, John Collins and Trey Young. So they have a nice little interesting squad going on down there. We'll see what that turns into. Playoffs? No, I don't think so yet. I can't. I mean, I gotta see it. I gotta see it together first. I, I like. I like their coach. I like Trey Young, but I don't. I want to see what that turns into first before I can say that they're a playoff team. But that was the most interesting thing because now the Bucks are in a position where it's like we're trying to get all these pieces together. They traded for Drew Holiday. I think they gave it way too much for Drew Holiday. Uh, they traded for Drew Holiday, and now they're not getting this guy that they originally planned on getting. And it's kind of like, you know, is Giannis gonna stay or is Giannis gonna go? Is Giannis? I Giannis still strikes me as a good, and I don't even mean this in a, in a, never mind. 
Giannis is staying in Milwaukee. Okay, I have my reasons of why I believe Giannis will stay in Milwaukee. I think he will stay. Um, I don't think that I don't think the organization did enough to make them a contender. Um, but that, they did do one thing though that was decent. But they gave us. Let's just get straight to it. They gave us Wesley Matthews. That's not. I don't think that's a big loss. To them, it's a it's it's not a big loss. To us, it's a huge game. A uh, huge. Braun will find him. Oh my God! And I watched Wesley, Wesley Matthews miss a lot of open threes in the playoffs. Yeah. I'm I'm not worried about that. I've okay. wa- I've, I've watched what Wesley's made a lot of threes. Uh, he's made also made a lot of threes. He not in the play. past year and a half. <laughs> He's not comfortable. He wasn't comfortable. He wasn't What's with the comfort? I've met fuck comfortable. Make some shots. Make watch, some open shots. Watch, watch, watch. Please Oh, watch. my goodness. Please comfortable. Please you had a, not a fucking please sojo. Please watch. This might be his best sojo. <laughs> this might be his best <laughs> Look at where shooting. Look at where I'm comfortable, sojo. What else do the Lakers do? <laughs> That's where you comfortable at. You a freak. Mark Gasol. Mark Gasol. All right, so they got – okay, another funny moment during the draft. Dwight Howard tweeted after the championship, I'm a Laker for life, purple and gold. Lakers forever. I woke up. Dwight Howard has been traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. My nigga, get your ass out of here. And JaVale McGee, you get your ass out of here too. We'll pick up Marcus Gasol. Okay? JaVale's in Cleveland right now. So Ooh. JaVale's in Cleveland. Wasteland. Yeah. Tristan's in, Tristan's in Boston. Ooh, watch. <laughs> Hide your wives. <laughs> Mookie Betts, hide your wife. Uh, um, <laughs> who else? Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh no, Mookie Betts is in LA now. I'm sorry, he's not a Red Sox anymore. <laughs> Mookie Betts. <laughs> <laughs> who should hide their wives? Jason Tatum, hide your wife. <laughs> I think he's single. Jason Tatum. I mean, he's he, now he is not. Tristan Thompson is in town. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Okay, who else? Um, um, Lakers pick. Oh, they picked up Dennis Schroeder. We said, which you mentioned in the yep. uh, the, the Brian necking session we did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, Brian. Um, so they got Dennis. Yep. Mark. Mark Gasol. Big. That's that's just big defensively for them, right? Because they got Harold. Harold's not that great defensively, but he's great in the paint. Um, Harold. Montrez Harold to the Lakers. Who I got. I got. Who do you start? Who do you start? What do you mean? Out of the bigs, Marcus Gasol or Montrezl Harrell? Uh, I mean, you can't start Gasol and AD, can you? I think you can, right? I thought you did. I thought you did because it gives AD space to work, the room to be the power forward, right? And they can both yeah. shoot threes. Yeah. Um, I thought you. I did think you can. Space is the floor. I think you can. I think Montrez is great. Is better off the bench than anything else. I like you got to find a way to get him, have him come I off think, the bench. I think Montrez only comes in for AD. Him and Mo- him and Dennis Schroeder off the bench is a problem. Thirty points guaranteed. I promise you, guaranteed. Combined thirty points every night. That's guaranteed. Is a problem, especially in the playoffs. Um, thirty off the bench is nuts. So I think the Lakers just like cemented their position to repeat. And Wesley Matthews. <laughs> Uh, okay, if you feel that way about Wesley, Wesley Matthews, okay, that's cool. Okay, um, that's all right. An- another funny moment for me. So before free agency began, there was a big photo shoot. Teams were releasing their jerseys, psh, psh, psh. Um, and the Phoenix Suns released their jerseys called the Valley Boys. Oh yeah, you were telling me about this with uh, okay. um, Kelly Oubre. Uh, Kelly Oubre, who's a warrior, right? Now. Who is now a warrior? So Kelly Oubre. Does this photo shoot, puts on this whole uniform, gets traded to the Thunder. Then from the Thunder, he goes to Golden State right after Klay Thompson's injury. Mm-hmm. Are the Warriors okay? If Steph is healthy, they're a playoff team. Absolutely. If Steph's hand is good, they're a playoff team. They don't make any noise. There are still a lot of teams better than them. They're probably on the, on the same level as like... Uh, Pro- maybe like a Dallas, but Dallas hasn't really gotten better this offseason. Um, they have not. They actually got rid of somebody, too. Yo, I got a question for you. Talk to me. What's wrong with 
what's wrong with Boston? Why doesn't anybody want to stay in Boston? Why don't superstar players want to stay in Boston? Gordon Haywood, there was no place for him. There was just no 30, place. Fuck a place. He left $34 million on the table. There was no place for him. It wasn't comfortable. He has got seven guards. You talking to me about this comfort shit. Fuck comfortable. Make it work. Yo, we talking from a position where we would love 34 mil. Them niggas talking from a position where they would love I'm a not, ring. I'm not even talking. He went to Charlotte. He wants a ring. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I want a ring. <laughs> you got that. W- winning is the most important part to me about this game. <laughs> I love when people. I love when players say that. Any any athlete, yeah, winning's the most important part to me. And I'm gonna take this max contract in Denver. Come on, son. Winning's not. Don't lie. Don't lie. Just be yo, real. You want the bag? Nothing Denver, wrong De- with that. Yo, Detroit, Loki, try to get better. They picked up Josh Jackson. They picked up Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant went to Jeremy Grant went to Detroit for the bag. I respect it. I know. I respect. He did. He did what you would do. He did did exactly what you was talking about. If you got it, winning is great. Winning is awesome. But it's like don't don't hate on players because they take the bag. And don't try to and don't and Jer. I don't want to see a a press conference where Jeremy Grant is like. Yeah, I think we can do some great things this season. I think we can win. No, you don't. You don't believe that. Blake Griffin still got a fucked up knee. You don't believe you can win. I, no, his knee's all right. He'll be doing jokes now. That knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, his knee being okay is the biggest joke. That is the biggest. I wanted him to go to Golden State. I mean, oh. Who, Blake Griffin? No. That would have been cool. Blake, I love Blake, Blake's game. He just can't stay healthy. I think Blake is a is, is an amazing talent, and he's expanded his game um, like so much in the past few years. But he just can't stay healthy. I don't know about Blake. Um, who else you got for so people who still need homes, people who also demanded homes? So Boogie Cousins still needs a home. He'll probably get a league minimum deal. From who? Who? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who needs him. I don't know who looks at him and, and I thought like, Miami could use him, but they did something a little different. They picked up my buddy Mo. Yes. Which is good off the bench or starter, whichever way you want to swing it. No, he fits that Miami mold. He's, yeah, that's, um, that's that's real. That's 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 comfort. Good size, mobile. That's comfort, yeah. Decent that's comfort. shooter, good I think, defensively. I think his game expands. I think, his, I think his game expands there, actually. Yeah, under Pat it's Riley, a, he's going to ride him. Like it's it's gonna it's gonna be under it's gonna EA, be a challenge. It's gonna be a different. I just I'm I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a different experience, different culture. Um, yeah. Who else did they grab? Who Miami? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. They got they resigned. Of, they resigned Dragic, which I think is they big resigned also. Dragic, which is also really cool. Which is really good for them. Um, I think they're set up to have another great season, uh, depending on what you know the Sixers look like, and Boston. I don't know. The East is. Is weird to me. Like, I don't look at a team in the East and think, hey, like, they have a really great chance of making it to the finals, other than probably the Heat because they just did. Um, and then you guys also got to um, talk about a hat. Man, I just had it up here. The um, yo Jason Tatum's deal in Boston. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Jason Tatum. Shout out to uh, Max Steele. Both of them getting Max Steele. Bags Five have been years, received. Indeed. Get paid, young nigga, get paid. Donovan Mitchell ran, jumped into the pool with socks on. Now, I, with no amount of money, normally would not jump into the pool with socks on because it would make me uncomfortable. But when you get $195 million, honestly, it's okay. I'd have jumped in that bitch naked. Also, also probably where I would have went with that. Actually, why would I go with socks on when I can also go naked? I got $195 million now. You see my ass. Fuck it. You a freak. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, those are, I mean, NBA free agency is always a lot of fun. Um, the Raptors lost Serge Ibaka to the Clippers. So I want to just point something out to you. The Raptors lost both their big men. So now what? Chris Bosh, maybe? What? What are you talking about, Chris Bosh? <laughs> I just listened to this all the smoke. Um, 
Yeah, he was dropping. He, he had a few gems. He had a few gems. Yeah, he was cool. He was cool. He's actually Indeed. he's actually a lot funnier um, than I thought he was. Well, we did this thing when he was playing where we made fun of him because like we thought he was gay. Yo, which was the stupidest shit. Which it was it was juvenile shit. It was homophobic shit. Like he was just like just a regular nigga. So you're laughing. You feed you feeding into it. I'm not. Nah, I want to laugh at why did we do that? Because like, we were stupid. Us as men, us as a culture. You know what, Chris Bosh, if you hear this out there, I want to apologize because honestly, like I took part in all those jokes. The 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 video with you and the bottle, nigga, that was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. I can't front. I can't. That was crazy. How could you not laugh at that? How could you not share that? How could you not? How could you not share that meme? <laughs> How could you not? Wow. Thank you, Chris Bosh. You the man. Indeed. Um, but yeah, just little dumb kid shit that we did. Yo, we was, really were just some stupid. kids for that, man. Just a whole yeah. bunch of teenage boys making fun yeah. of a grown ass man with kids and a fire wife. Oh, she bad. Like, why did we do that? We were stupid. clowning him to the point where he literally said in an interview that it played on him mentally. I, f- I felt guilty for that. I was like, fuck. Yeah, because I shared that meme. I think I actually made a Chris Bosch meme back. I had like a meme maker on my phone. And I think I made a Chris Bosch meme. Are you, are you the meme generator? <laughs> I used to do that. I used to you do it a lot, actually. Did you used to just float memes in the internet? That, absolutely. None of them like gained traction, <laughs> but I would like post them. If you look, actually, well, I did a cleansing of my Instagram a few months ago, so it's not on my Instagram page anymore. But um, water. Yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of them. I had like a... Trevor, the, I had, you just sit down and create memes I made memes and about then just release them to the internet I made memes about <laughs> Kanye's first baby like when he named her North and I made like memes about okay like so where's my sister east west and south it was stupid it was stupid shit <laughs> and you're not even laughing because it's funny you're laughing because it's stupid because it was <laughs> I'm laughing because how old were you, man? How old is North? I was a grown ass man. Tell, I can't even. Find yo, I gotta find out how old North is. Cause I was not a kid. I was not a kid at all. I was a grown ass man paying bills and rent. <laughs> it's not. It was, it's just not something that I should have been doing. Right. I just want to expose you a little bit more, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, like make me a little North bit more West vulnerable. Northwest is seven right years now. old. You're 35 years old. I'm 30. I was so you were 28, 28 year old years old, just sending out. Just memes with just compasses and memes. kids yeah. and bullying Chris Bosh. You're a bully. Paying bills, light bill, cable bill, all of that. Grown ass man doing that shit. Um, I'm not mad at you, though, because that's what you have to do. Have a little fun in life. Um, Absolutely. Speaking of fun, do the Lakers repeat based on all the moves? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Yo, I just pray we stay. Ha- I don't even want to talk about it. I mean, LeBron is... I don't want to talk about. Hey, I don't want to talk about. I don't want to talk about. He's, he's not an injury prone type of guy, and I feel like all these all this news that's being made about like the miles on his body, like I don't. I think it's doing bullshit. This. Stop doing, doing what? This. You really feel like you you like you're on that superstitious shit where you feel like Bro, if we talk about it, it's gonna happen. Ever heard Marv Albert at the line? He's like James Harden. I just told my sister this the other day. It's the same thing. Oh, he's always like, oh yeah, James Harden's made seventy seven thousand exactly. consecutive free throws, yes. and then he misses it. James misses fucking short. Next one, next one, short. That has nothing. I, I don't believe in that type of stuff. That has nothing to do well, with like. Well, the you guy don't believe in basketball, those. and you don't believe the league is changing. So uh, you need I, some. I, you need some faith. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, like I said, the messaging is great. We don't have to get into it like again, but the messaging is great. But people are who are gonna who they're gonna be like, unless it's actually different people. How many seventy? 80 year old people are in your life right now that you could change their perspective on some shit. Oh, can't even change 50 year old perspectives right now. I just chalk it up to just stubbornness. So these owners are going to be there. They're going to be themselves. They're going to have their ideologies and their perspectives on life. It's not going to change unless it's somebody new or younger that has a totally different ideology and perspective. And like me and Kashima were talking about this in education also because there are a lot of teachers who were Trump voters. And while we want to say that, like, everybody should have freedom of, you know, practicing whatever political thing they want to practice, that ideology around kids, like black and brown kids, around immigrant kids, it seeps its way into how you teach them. 
it's so funny that you bring that up. Yeah. Because um, yesterday we had uh, lunch with a friend who moved here from New York and literally ran into this issue where, like, promoting a certain type of education from, like, from the, the school curriculum was alluding to, like, tr- Trump's, all Trump's, like, negatives, right? But this, because we're in Florida now, that's not okay with the parents. So the mm-hmm. parents ran up on Shorty. And it As was like, should. yo, like, like, that's like, it's like how you view life is how you will teach life. And that's really interesting when it comes to our children. And it's very important when it comes to our children. And and that's why I, I that's why I, I no that's and that's why I <laughs> yeah so much sports and, and that and that's what I think about when I think about these these owners like they can they can be okay with the messaging changing and understanding that it's going to help their bottom line if the messaging changes but you're not you're not going to change a seventy year old a seventy year old man mind about how he he's feels about, about black to people. Croak. That's what we think. Do you think they got the elixir of life? That's what we think. Donnie, well, um, uh, uh, the owner of the Knicks is still out here moving and grooving. New movement. What are you talking about? New movement. Winning chips. Man. Oh, a- oh. Anyway, you got any giving, more, we got any- giving, giving players a voice. I love that. We got, we got, any, more, we got any more sports? Uh, any, any more sports to get into? We gave them enough. Yeah. I feel like that was good. Sports, sports, sports. Um, along the football lines, though, Joe Burrow. Cincinnati Bengals out for the season, torn ACL, MCL, had rookie of the year hopes. Um, definitely hope he gets better and can uh, you know, get back out there that and get That was tough, busy. man. Yeah, all, like those tough. type of injuries are really like hard to watch. Injuries are trash. I wish, I wish we could be elastic. You really just <laughs> said that out loud. Okay, that's cool. We'll just be elastic. <laughs> we'll just be elastic. Elasticity is the, the key to health. <laughs> you know right. what I mean, man. I just wish I, be maybe, I, may, maybe I maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I know what you mean. <laughs> Get me off this thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank you guys for listening. We got our sports special. Anytime sports runs like, long, we're definitely gonna like do a do like a separate uh separate segment for you guys to get all your sports shit off. <laughs> And, you know, hopefully in the coming years, athletes will become elastic and there will be no injuries. <laughs> All right, guys, for uh, for Josh, I'm Trev. Hit the socials. Make sure you watch, like, share all the videos and content you like. Watch my Peace rant out. about the link in the bio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good rant. Very good rant. Indeed. Peace out, y'all.